Hi, I'm Eric with Home Network Central. I'm currently logged into my Asus RTAC68U router. And this video is gonna be all about DHCP and static IPs, what that means and how to configure it on this router. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which is basically just a fancy way of saying automatic IP address. If I didn't have DHCP, then every time I connected to my router via Wi-Fi or if I plugged a device into my router, I would have to go up to my internet, my internet settings and go into my adapter here, go to my IPv4 settings, and this would be manual because DHCP wouldn't exist. And I would have to go in here and create my own IP address, 192.168.1.2. 50, whatever. I would have to type in my own subnet mask, my own gateway. I would have to type in, I would have to fill out all this manually, which doesn't look like a lot, but you would have to do it for every device that connected. And that is just, it would be annoying. And most people don't know what an IP address is or how it works, or maybe don't know what a DNS server is or what to put in here. So DHCP does all this stuff automatically for you. Can we get a thank you DHCP for taking care of all that stuff for all of us who don't like to do all that manual configuration. Now, if you do choose to do manual configuration, that would be called a static IP address. It's either automatic or it's static. Automatic is DHCP. Static is your own IP. It's like, you know, it's either static or automatic. And if you're not using DHCP, you have a static IP address. Since I'm using DHCP and I'm connected to this router, uh, that, that IP information doesn't just get pulled from anywhere. It doesn't just make it up. It comes from a DHCP server. And that DHCP server is this router. The router has a DHCP server on it. So if we wanna configure the DHCP server on this router, we can scroll down and on the left side, there's a LAN menu. And when this page loads, there's a DHCP, DHCP server tab. On this page, you'll see enable the DHCP server is enabled. Yes, it's enabled. And the most important setting here is the pool. The pool is the first IP that's available to, to be assigned and the last IP that's available to be assigned. So the IP pool starting address is 192.168.1.2. And the IP pool ending address is 192.168.1.254. The reason it starts at two is because one is taken. 192.168.1.1 is the default IP address of the router. So you don't want it to assign its own IP to something else because if two devices have the same IP address, there's an IP conflict and that will cause communication issues on your network. And the reason why the ending address is 254 is because the way IP addresses work, uh, that's the highest you can go. You can go to 255, but 255 is re reserved as a broadcast, meaning if you send something to 192.168.1.255, it would send it to all the IP addresses on the network. And that's not what, that's not what we want to do. So the lowest IP is .2 and the highest is .254. You can change this. You can change these to whatever range you want, as long as it falls within the range. Like you don't, like you can change this to .5 for the starting IP and you can make it go up to 50 if you want. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave my, the default values. So two is the lowest IP and 254 is the highest. So everything in between is an eligible IP for this router to hand out to a device. The default gateway here is the IP address to get out of the network. And it happens to be the router's IP address. Now, I this, hap, this is blank. And in my head, I'm thinking the 192.168.1.1 should be in here. But by default, the default gateway is not in here and it's working fine. So it's probably okay. You can change the default gateway to something else. You can probably type in 192.168.1.1 because that's the IP address of this router and that would probably work. But since they leave it blank by default and it's working, I'm just gonna leave it like that. You'll see in my settings here, 
it's one of the things you have to type in is additional DNS servers. And this is, this is filled in by what you have typed in DNS server right here. So a DNS server is a server that tells you that maps domain names to IP addresses. If you go to your browser and you type in, for example, let's just say leagueoflegends.com. I'm not even sure if that's a real website. I'm sure it is because it's a popular game. If you type in leagueoflegends.com, your computer doesn't know how, what that is or what it means. It has to go to an IP address of another server that has that web page on it. So a DNS server will take that domain name, and it'll say, okay, leagueoflegends.com, here's the IP address for that server. And so it'll send that IP address to your computer, and then your computer can go to the, go to the web server for leagueoflegends.com. That's what a DNS server does. It takes that, what you type in your browser here, and converts it to an IP address all in the background. Another cool thing that just happens in the background that most of us don't even think about. And you can you can put in your own manual DNS server here. Since it's blank, what usually happens is when you connect your router to your ISP, your router will pull DNS servers from your ISP, and then it'll assign those DNS servers to your clients. That's why this is blank because it's your it's not that your router is not assigning any DNS servers. It's that it's just using whatever your IP, uh, ISP gives you. I happen to know that a Google DNS server is 8.8.8.8. .8 so I could put that in there if I wanted. You know, some some people just prefer certain DNS servers because there are certain manual configurations you can do to DNS servers and they, or some may be faster or closer to you. Uh, that's a whole nother ballpark. It's a whole nother, nother video, but you can look into that. If you have a specific DNS server you like, you can put it right there. So one cool thing about this router is it makes static IP addresses really easy. If you want to give a static IP address to one of your computer, one of your computers that's connected to your router, you can just do enable manual assignment, yes. And then you go down here and you find your computer that's already connected and it'll automatically put the, it gave this computer an IP address via DHCP. And once I select it here, it just automatically puts the IP address in here. And then all I have to do is hit this little plus button and it adds. Now this computer will always be assigned the same IP address. The way DSCP works is it gives you a lease for an IP address and it only lasts for a certain amount of time. It's completely possible that this laptop could be getting, given an IP address and then I could turn, the, turn it off and come back. I don't even have to turn it off because the DHCP lease is what determines how long it lasts. So I don't even have to turn it off. I can just go to work and come back and it could have a different IP address. And, you know, that's cool. That's for most of us, that doesn't even matter, but it's easy. If you just add your device to this list down here, it'll always have the same IP address. Now, why would I want a static IP address? Why would I want my IP, my IP address to remain the same all the time? Some people believe that having a, having a static IP address on a gaming computer is better or faster or something. Having a static IP address is not, does not really provide any benefits. It doesn't make your computer faster. It's not going to help. The only way the static IP is really going to help you is if you have some kind of specific use. Uh, for example, port forwarding. There's another can of worms I'm going to open right here, but port forwarding is basically if you have a game, let's say you're playing a game and you're playing, you're connected to your router and for whatever reason, your router, you, you can't, something online is not working with your game. Like you can't, you're, it's being laggy or you can't connect to a gaming server or something. Um, you can use port forwarding, which there's a website called portforward.com. And I'm just going to use League of Legends as an example because I know it's a popular game. I know a lot of people that play this game. So I'm just, that's why I'm using this game. And if you scroll down, it'll tell you the ports that this game uses. So you can go in your router and configure port forwarding by adding all these ports to the router and saying, okay, open up all these ports, but only open it up to my gaming router, not to everything. Just, I mean, open up to my gaming PC and you can go into your router and configure that. And if your IP address is always changing, then when you configure port forwarding on the router, you're going to always have to go into your router and 
change your IP address. Oh, my DHCP updated my IP again. I have to go to my router and change the setting. Oh, DHCP updated my IP again to something else. I have to go into my router and change my setting. That's annoying. So when you add your computer down here to a static IP, your, your computer will always have this same IP address. And you don't have to go in. So when you go into your port forwarding settings, your computer will always have the same IP address. And you don't have to keep logging in and changing the setting, changing the setting, changing the setting. The cool thing about this is you're basically reserving this IP address for this computer. And in your computer settings, you can still leave your setting checked. You can still leave this as automatic DHCP because it's still using DHCP, but it's not going to renew a different IP address every time it renews. It's gonna reserve this IP address. So that's kind of cool. There's another way you can do it where you don't enable the manual assignment and you can just change this number. Let's say you want to reserve dot two for your gaming PC. You can change this to three. So now two will never be used. And then you can go in your computer and you can manually assign your computer dot two this way. But I can just leave mine on DHCP and leave all my settings the same, except I reserve it down here. So I don't even have to change my computer settings. So this is super cool. In closing, DHCP is dynamic host configuration protocol, and it's just a complicated way of saying automatic IP address. Static IP address just means that you're manually assigning, assigning an IP address to one client. And this router makes static IP addresses really easy because you can still use DHCP, but your IP will always be, you'll always be assigned the same IP address. So you don't need to go in your computer and change any IP settings on your computer. I hope this video was helpful. If it did, please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.